Let me say that probably the coolest perk of all at working at Kellogg um, is hanging out with Liz Livingston Howard up there um, and getting to measure the impact of the U.S. Olympic Committee, which uh, was the most fun I've had in a long time last week at one of the Olympic Training Centers. So um, there's cool things at Kellogg. I encourage you to explore them. There's another cool guy right there named Rob Wilcott that you should all get to know. Um, I wanted to kind of put a wrapper on the day. There were some really exciting and scintillating and seductive ideas that were presented to us. But I want to start with you. Uh, I have my own uh, kind of distillation of things, but I want to start with you. Like, what, uh, what did you learn today? What struck you uh, in a kind of a quick popcorn-like thing? What's one big takeaway or one big idea, something that inspired you um, today? I want to hear from you guys. That's a that's probably a better wrap-up than I could do because I think your, your conclusions were amazing. And um, I wrote down some themes I, I heard today that struck me, and I wanted to summarize them with you. And then I wanted to conclude with a, with a call to action of, of like what you can literally do um, following this. So this isn't just an echo chamber of ideas and everyone walks back into their life and we really don't have anything to take away. So I wanted to leave you with some insights. But in terms of what I, uh, what I took away from today, if you look at the stream of ideas... This is what I heard. Big data, technology, social networking, tying dollars to results, gamification, public-private partnerships, shifting from just doing good to actually solving social problems. There was a lot of thematic here today about not just doing charity, but how do we actually solve social problems in our lifetime. Um, innovation, minimum viable product, entrepreneurship, this idea of a cost per outcome to the point of solving problems, like it costs a dollar to solve a problem, it costs a dollar to actually save a life. Um, it's actually not that expensive, was one big takeaway I, I, I heard um, from Emmanuel and from Martin and other conversations and from Dave that we may actually not need that much more money for social impact. That may not be our biggest problem. This idea of collective impact and moving uh, you know, from me to we, and how can we work collaboratively rather than trying to have an independent um, set of entities trying to work one at a time? Um, we almost have a metastatic rate of nonprofits in this country. There are over 50,000 new nonprofits created every single year in America. We literally have over 1.4 million charities in this country. Um, and if you look at the number of types of nonprofit programs that exist, there's only 1,100 different types of nonprofit programs. So that means you have over a thousand nonprofits for every one type of program. And if you divide that by the number of common outcomes that exist, and there are only 132 outcomes that we've been able to standardize in this sector, that's basically 10,000 nonprofits for every one outcome. Um, so figuring out how do we collaborate, how do we innovate, how do we figure out one plus one equals three is, is critical. Measurement and data. Uh, obviously, and, and thinking about how data connects to markets, data connects to finance, and different creative ways of creating, uh, of, of developing financial leverage in the markets. Dave Chen provided, I think, a really um, um, mind-stretching explanation of impact investing that probably most, most of us don't think of initially. So where does this all go? And, and um, many students I talk to about your careers and uh, I think um, Martin gave a phenomenal presentation about his career um, and abstracting his career into a series of nodes and what got him to those nodes and this idea of career hacking, which I love. Um, but I want to leave you with some thoughts on, on how you can make a difference. Um, because the ways that we have made a difference in the social sector in the past 20, 30 years may not be the ways that we will make them going forward. I would submit to you several things that uh, may not be true any longer. One, the only way to make an impact is through a nonprofit or a charity. That's just not true anymore. There are many ways we heard today of how to do that. Um, another, that, um, that the markets are only for making money. Um, there are people in this room who are making millions of dollars um, solving social problems whose full focus is on social change. Impact investors, entrepreneurs, technology people, 
um, businesses, other people like that. And third, that um, all, all the social problems have already been solved. There's already big organizations out there, these big branded charities that are already working on those things. And I think um, examples from Martin and Emmanuel and, and, um, and Elliot and others have shown that, that we can truly innovate and there's some really great uh, ways to go from zero to something pretty quickly. Speaking of which, as a footnote, there's a great book that Peter Thiel wrote that I highly recommend called Zero to One. Has anyone read it yet? It's like takes two minutes to read the whole book. But um, I would say as transformational as Good to Great was 10 years ago, this, this book is today for uh, kind of mandatory reading for MBAs. So um, the, the, the disruption that I see in the market is disrupting some of the myths of how do we make social change and on some level reinventing those. But at the end of the day, if you really, really want to make a difference in the world, then you don't want to just be another person working at an organization somewhere and you want to be a leader and you want to be a disruptor. The only thing that matters that I've seen across all the people who spoke today is that every single one of those people had something in common which allowed them to do what they're doing. And that common thing that I saw across all these disruptors was something called leverage. You can't create change without leverage. You certainly can't disrupt anything without any leverage. So there's three calls to action that I want to share with you today that, that, that um, I think will make you powerful in the world of social change and certainly that, that um, have followed my journey personally. I'll give you my personal anecdote for each of these. The first is you have to get a hard skill. A lot of people have come to me in the past and said, Look, I want to work with you and what you're doing is really cool and I'm really good at nonprofits. And I was like, I don't know what that means. How can you be good at nonprofits? Um, nonprofits isn't a skill, it's a category. It's like a tax exemption. So um, I don't, <laughs> are you a, like a tax attorney or, you know, so um, I think that we are realizing the people that you're hearing from today are not just program charity people. These are people who have hard skills in finance, hard skills in technology, hard skills in building campaigns and mobilizing masses of people, hard skills in academics, hard skills in writing. But my advice to you is be the best in the world at one thing. Burnish those credentials, develop those skills, maybe go into the private sector and, and, and maximize those skills for a little while, and then apply that skill to a social problem. Um, my personal journey was, like, I wasn't born a measurement guy. I have degrees in French literature and government, for God's sakes. Um, you know, what the hell do I know? Um, but I realized when I was at the Kennedy School at Harvard that, you know, um, all these people at Harvard Business School were talking about benchmarking and measurement and performance. And I said, how do we apply this to government? How do we apply this to social impact? And I learned, and I applied all the tools we learned at Kellogg or at the Kennedy School about statistics and economics and behavioral economics and um, um, accounting. How do we quantify soft, squishy things? And so I decided I was going to become the best in the world at measurement. And I wrote books on it. I taught it. I started consulting. I developed businesses. We created new data. We worked with clients. It doesn't matter. You can be the best in the world at anything you want to, but own an outcome. Be the best in the world at one thing. That is one step to creating leverage is have a hard skill and present yourself uh, with that skill. The second key to disrupting is that you have to create a platform. When I was at the Kennedy School, I started this journal with some other people called the Harvard Journal World Affairs. And we wanted to like write about best practices in public policy. And so every speaker that came through Harvard, I grabbed and put on my board. Yasuhiro Nakasone of Japan, Brian Mulroney of Canada, Valerie Giscard d'Estaing of France, Bob Gates, the CIA director, billionaires. I mean, I was just like, you want to be on the board of this Harvard Journal? And everyone's like, yeah. Um, and so they wrote a check, and we built an advisory board, and we created leverage, right? So I created a platform. First it was a journal, then I started a nonprofit called the Center for What Works. Um, then, um, then I started my own companies. Kellogg is a platform for many of you. You can create a platform in many ways. Platforms can be a company that you start. It can be a nonprofit that you start. 
It can be a blog. It can be your Facebook page. It can be Kellogg. It can be a student group. But create a vehicle, create a platform that will, that will create leverage for you. So one, get a hard skill. Two, create a platform. And three, um, find a source of leverage. If you want to disrupt, you have to find a source of leverage. One source of leverage is money. You can have a tremendous amount of money or accumulate a lot of money in a fund or something, and that's leverage. You can also have leverage through influence. Right? I mean, like um, Martin met some really influential people and created leverage through influence. You can meet a lot of interesting people. Your family may have influence. You may be involved in political things or have political relationships that give you influence. Influence is a form of, of leverage. Market power is another way to create leverage. So if you listen to what Kim talked about at Unilever, I mean, that's market power, right? They can, you can use your company, you can use a brand to create leverage, you can use the market, you can use financial markets, you can create financial instruments. You don't have to have money yourself. Um, and my personal favorite way of creating leverage is data. I never felt like I could go tell people what they should be doing to change the world. Who am I to go tell a governor or someone at the White House or a CEO of a company? Um, I'm just another talking head. But if I have data and I know benchmarks, I can walk into their office and say, hey, your impact is here. The whole market is here. How do you want to improve? And all of a sudden, I've created leverage. And it wasn't that expensive. Um, so find a way to create leverage. Hard skills platform and leverage, I think are the keys to disruption and the common themes that I've seen today. And at the end of the day, I would say that, you know, my best advice is just get out there and do something. Um, you know, the, 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 one of my favorite quotes um, when I was thinking about leaving this big fancy law firm in Chicago and starting my first organization, um, I went back and saw a, a friend at Harvard Business School, a guy named Alan Grossman, who's an amazing professor. And I said, like, what do I do, Professor Grossman? Like, I, I, I don't know if I leave this really lucrative legal job. I feel like I'm jumping off a cliff if I just start this organization. I had $3,000 in the bank. And he told me this story that I, I will convey to you about Napoleon. And um, this was um, in the field of battle. The enemy was advancing. His troops were gathered around him. And they said, like, General, General, the enemy is advancing. Um, we don't have um, a plan of attack. What should what should we do? What's our battle plan? And he, he paused and he looked at them and he said in French, because I know French, um, il faut s'engager et on verra. Translation, engage and the possibilities will emerge. And literally that's what Professor Grossman told me. He's like, Jason, engage and the possibilities will emerge. But if you sit there at that fat cat law firm for the rest of your life, you're never going to know. And so my advice to you today, and I think we can draw tremendous inspiration from all of these people who've taken great risk in their big corporate careers, or in their entrepreneurial careers, or in their professional academic careers, is to engage. And I promise you, uh, the possibilities will emerge. Thank you for coming today.